Alrighty. Let's make sure this is off here. Go live. Alright guys, what's up? We're getting kicked off here. Um, so, I'm just switching a few things up. Give me a second here. get this going 26 seconds in what up guys alrighty so welcome to Loon Live guys we are kicking it off here and I'm just clicking over to YouTube give me 10 seconds we have to do so much little tchotchkes alright perfect uh, everybody's here perfect perfect what's up guys so we're tying three flies maybe four if I get wild um, full disclosure um, but anyways, it's trout season and if you guys can tell from the hat, it is definitely salmon fly, March brown, uh, caddis are starting to come off. There's, uh, the bass bugs. What's up, brother? Um, there's a ton of stuff happening, a ton of things going down and, um, realistically it's just, it's a good time. It's a good time of year. We really dig this time of year. Um, so, we're going to be doing three, maybe a fourth secret pattern tonight. Um, anyways, if you guys are on Instagram and you want to hop over to uh, the YouTube side of things, I would strongly recommend it. Um, a, you're going to get really great video quality. We have three camera angles now. Um, and all in all, just a little bit better video quality. And it's still from your smartphone, so it's not a big deal. Um, so we have a little dry caddis, it's a spent caddis, somebody, you know, uh, somebody asked me to kind of create something um, for a style of fishing that we were doing, we're fishing the evening uh, when the caddis are ovipositing, and that's going to be kind of where I start tonight. Um, Moonshine Rods, what's up man, appreciate it, how's it going? Um, so all in all, it's going to be a really good, uh, fun little thing. So we're going to kick this off, and like I said, um, Go ahead and check out the YouTube thing, multiple camera angles, uh, and you can still heckle full bore. So, what we're going to start off with, and uh, this is just like a little, this is not a little, it's actually pretty big for a caddis, but it's a FW512 uh, hook. And so we're going to start there. Gotta get, drop my saddle. Gotta get back in the saddle again. Is YouTube up yet? Um, yes, because I am watching it while I do this. So YouTube is up. Quality is dope because I'm not only filming it, but I watch it just so I can see comments. Um, full disclosure. So this this little guy right here, depending on your cat of species, um, 10s, 12s, up to 18s. Um, if you tie 20s, you got problems. But we'll still love you. So I'm going to use my Vivas 50D. There's my scissors. The only thing I don't have, that's all right. We will have to jet out for a tenth of a second, possibly. Unless it's like right here. <laughs> I lost my UV resin. Um, all right, hold on. Let me grab the UV resin. I don't know where it went or why it's not in its spot, but I needed some thin, and it escaped. So we get a, you get a second. You get a quick break. Look, I'm back. Um, I kicked it halfway across the room. I'm super good at doing that. Um, so this is a little bit of glow bright. Yeah, it's all right. My office is pretty small. Not a lot of space to cover. I have to move about seven feet, maybe ten feet. I don't know. Not I'm not a measurer. So we're gonna go ahead and use this green glow bright floss. And for me, what this is really gonna represent is it's a trigger point and. Um, but it's also, caddis have little egg sacs on the back of them. And 
I personally think that the trout like them far more with the little egg sack. So this is kind of a spent um, little caddis pattern. Variation. There may be similar caddis patterns in the world. I'm not sure because I don't read magazines. The Globrite floss is pretty fickle. And that's not the right UV resin. That's a secret. I can't show you that. Um, but that's all right. Where's my box of all my UV resin? I have like 10 bottles of UV resin sitting over here at all times, and it's just totally disappeared um, in the last 20 minutes. And I know exactly who the culprits are. Um, so this is a little bit of dry fly dubbing. And... What I'm going to use for ribbing, it's all right, this thing doesn't use a lot of UV dub or resin, um, is just uh, fine and dry. Or, uh, you know, super fine, whatever your favorite is. So I'm going to go ahead and top flight, actually, this one's top flight. So it's top flight dubbing. Um, and this is like a cinnamon caddis color. And you can see I'm going to build a really, really small, small, small body. I don't want a big body here. Okay? That's an important feature. And we're going to take a saddle hackle. And I'm just going to cut the cut the end off of it, the very bottom. And I'll just go ahead and wrap tie that in nice and tight. So it's not going to come out. And I'm going to wrap backwards. And by doing that, you kind of get a little bit of taper. Um, let's see. Yes, I have read Gary LaFontaine's Caddisfly, but not in a very long time. I should probably revisit it more often. So I'm going to use our Mylar tinsel now, and I'm going to wrap forward hoping that some of that cinnamon kind of comes through and creates a nice little body segment there. So it's going to give it a little bit of flash. Like I said, I'm fishing these later in the evening, typically in slack water. So I want it to sit super low and look super beat up. Now, that's a you know good trick. The YouTube feed's not showing up. That's weird. Um, if you click on the the Loon site, it took me right there. So yeah, if you guys go to Loon Outdoors, watch the Loon Live thing, it'll take you right there. I'm not sure. That's all I did, and I'm watching it, so it has to be somewhere hiding so what I'm gonna do is what I call like a rough stack on this hair and it's no it's not stacked at all and so all I do is I I get as much of the fluff out of it as I can Loon outdoors won't show hmm interesting well I'm sorry for the misinformation it's weird that it's showing on my end I'm not sure um, so I'm gonna take a loose wrap and then a little bit tighter wrap and I'm gonna sizzle in this wing here so from there I mean you could cut you know if you cut it like that that's gonna be an elk hair caddis but That should be, let's see, there's people watching it on YouTube, so I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> so what I want to do is, is cut it short. The next trick is you're going to save these butt ends of that 
of that fiber. It's important. So what I do now is I, I wrap through the front of this little guy. And we're going to create the, uh, I'll show you guys, I'm not sure how, hmm, don't tell the fish that. <laughs> so I'm going to take a little bit darker of top flight, and this is like a, a like a dark brown, and um, I'm not sure why the, why people are having trouble with the live stream. YouTube, but um, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here. So I kind of build this on my on my bench, truthfully. Okay, so all I'm doing is I'm laying down the dubbing and uh, bullet head caddis over this. I don't know what a bullet head caddis is. Full disclosure, I don't know every fly pattern. Um, I know it may be shocking, but it's so true. And you guys can see, I'm just kind of sprinkling this in here. So this kind of turns into a composite loop of deer hair, remnants, and dry fly dub. I'm also super bad at names of flies. Um, so you guys can see here, I got my top flight dubbing and my deer hair all smushed together. And once I get it in here, I know this is gonna be far, far too big. So it gets a haircut in the dubbing loop. And for this guy, optimally, I'm going to just be dropping it down to a little over a quarter inch. So since I can move it around and do different stuff with it, I'm going to go ahead and spin the dubbing loop. And then you're going to get this really cool leg-tastic creature beast. So from there, I'm just going to treat this like a hackle a very spiky looking hackle and I just kind of palmer it in there's a little leftover I got adventurous no big deal so what I'll do is I'll pull it back over. I'm just going to create a little face. And I don't mind what color it is. You can do brown, blacks, whatever. But we're just going to dull this down a bit. Let's see. It does look like a dust bunny. Um, absolutely. So I kind of start by trimming. You know, I got kind of sick of just wasting deer hair all the time. And so I just kind of trim this. And I don't mind if I trim some of the hackles because it's a lot of floaty stuff. So I just continuously kind of work over it's gonna look like legs so you guys can see that bottom profile there it's very leggy but over overall you just get this little tiny low riding buggy caddis with legs kind of sticking out all over the place and works out yeah top flight super fine whatever you all want um, as long as it's a dry fly dubbing, but that's the little egg plopper and I fish it in really low light and it's not very fun to see, um, because it sits incredibly like that in the water. Like it just sits 
maybe maybe there like under my nail so it's a cool little pattern it's kind of juicy <laughs> what's up Eric how are you buddy all right I'm gonna grab the non-secret bottle of resin now because I'm that tricky so many secrets here sorry none of them are labeled either so that's like really bad I have tons of secrets I can't share yet. I got told no. <sighs> dust bunny under the couch. Perfect. Love dust bunnies. I'm all about it. So. Alrighty. We're moving onwards and downwards. Let's make sure this thing isn't... Nope. Hey, we have something that I can show people. That's awesome. There's some new secret stuff coming out. You guys can tell. It is what it is. Um, so next up, I'm just going to do this like ultra nasty heavy little March Brown pattern. I'll show you guys what's up with him. So you can do, use whatever underwire you want. Um, I just do a few layers of 0.15. So my trick is when I'm doing a big bead like this, sometimes non-lead wire breaks, is I'll come back over the top. And I'll do a double layer. It's like a really good little option. And I'll slam that wire up inside the bead and it's going to be held in there nice and tight. So we'll go ahead and work towards the back here. What size is the bead? Big. Um, forget if it's a 5.5. No, it's not a 5.5. So it's either a 3.8 or a 4.0. Maybe a 4.3. I don't know. Um, big bead. Big bead, size 8 hook. And, uh, and this one just happens to be... Uh, so the last one was a fire hole 830, or no, you saw the last one. Um, getting ahead of myself. So this is just an FW 580, size 8. Size 8 doesn't bother me. I'd tie it in a 6, um, and you can tie them as small as you want. I just don't fish a ton of small flies. I fish very large, heavy flies. Thanks, Jeremy, I appreciate it. Noisemaker. I don't know what that noisemaker was. I keep trying to silence my phone since I am using that for the Instagram side of things. And uh, do not disturb just does not mean what it used to, in my opinion. <laughs> so I'm just going to put in a tail. And now this happens to be uh, like some wild turkey biot that I dyed like a tan color. So you guys can just use tan. Like, you don't have to freak out and try to find, like, custom dyed by Matt Calise turkey buy up because it doesn't exist. I'm just a dork. Um, but that's all right. I get bored and I, I do things late at night, like dye feathers and so forth. Um, so with this guy, we're just going to use a little bit more flash. Um, and this is, like, a small, small size flash. What hook size? Size 8 size big bead big a bead as you can put on there man and if you think you have enough weight you don't um, that's that's my my honest assessment of people fishing they'll be like fishing deep water fishing like a small weightless fly with like an AB split shot and it, that's just not gonna cut it so you gotta kinda gotta check what you're doing and 
you know, like the guys who say if you're not losing flies, you're not fishing, whatever. But um, you need to get down deep. That's the most important name of the game. Uh, for this dubbing, I do like to use little swax. This is the low tack option because the high tack is too sticky for my liking. Um, and we're just going to do a dubbing primp here. I don't even know which. It's a figment of your imagination. A loon magnet, maybe. Might be a special magic loon magnet. Patented technology. Designed in the office here. So we're going to do a dubbing noodle. And remember, push all the color out of your nails. Like you can see my nail beds start to change colors. You want it nice and tight. Well, that's unfortunate. mess busy sorry guys all right let's see see if you guys come back online I apologize on the Instagram side of things do not disturb is not working let's see what happens here All right. Hmm. <laughs> Shows hidden under the video. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. Good job. Okay. Well, we're back. Apparently, Do Not Disturb does not work. So... All I did was dub a body, guys. Hey, hi again. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, I don't know. I, apparently, I don't understand what do not disturb means. Uh, so, we dub the body, and I'm ribbing with the flash. And that'll be, that'll be good. Kind of splayed these out a little bit. But... We'll go from here. My goodness. So what I'm going to use is uh, you can use some turkey here. I'm going to go. I'm going to cheat, um, and I'm going to use some fly some D's bug back. We also use this brown on the next pattern. So it's a good variation if you don't drop it. First and foremost, we're going to pull a little bit of tinsel. For that, I like medium opal. Alrighty. Change the privacy settings. It's too late now brother I'm um, I'm not that guy that was that's the back end guy's job is to change the privacy settings um, so that's kind of odd but that's on the YouTube side of things so once we do that there's these little legs um, and they're called Chicone's crusher legs and they're just a clear brown variation of a leg um, it's the only ones that are clear um, with modeled coloring so 
kind of think they're cool and they're buggy looking, if you guys can see those. Oh, sorry, I'm missing a few comments, guys. Um, so I'm going to tie these in at the 6 and 9, or 3 and 9 position. Um, kind of just either side of the fly there. Um, and for the dubbing, for the main body of this, I don't really vary it too much. I mean, you, you could um, if you wanted to, but I don't, I don't trip out. Oh, man. Train wreck. All right, hold on. Instagram. Hmm. <laughs> all right all right mr. F YouTube world we're gonna have to wait a second to fix Instagram so we're just gonna finish this guy out and we'll, sh we'll show it to him here in a second so I'm just using that same red fox squirrel dubbing And I might need a little bit more, which is fine. Oh boy, no sound on Instagram. We'll fix it right now. It may take a second. I don't know why, but if somebody calls or a notification comes up during the middle of a live stream, it's uh, it shuts the sound off when it restarts. It's the weirdest bug ever so I'm not really sure what goes on there and then only way to fix it that I found is to completely restart the phone alrighty now there's sound <laughs> So I'm just going to pull this wing case here. Okay. Man, phones are slower and slower to start up, in my opinion. Alrighty. Got a bingo here. No good when people call in the middle of live streaming. It's kind of life, right? It's like Murphy's Law. And of course, the one person who calls is the one person I told don't call. <laughs> All right, give me one second here, guys. I'm just going to kind of add on to this story here. It'll be fine. All righty. Cool. Alrighty. Hopefully you guys are there. I apologize. We'll back up one step. So I dubbed a quick body. Sorry, the whole thing had to be reset. And YouTube, I know you guys can't find it for whatever reason. I apologize. But we're back, and all we've done is dub a body and put a wing case on. And you have sound now, hopefully. Hey, Matt. Can hear you. Hey. Thanks, buddy. I don't know why, but when somebody pulls a Drangus maneuver and calls me during the middle of a live stream, if it's on my phone, I found this on my personal account, that it shuts off all of the audio moving forward. And it's like a weird glitch that probably two Americans care about, me being one of them. So, you can finally hear. Okay, so we dubbed the body with the same dubbing down here. And now we're just going to pour some thin into a big, awesome, nasty wing case. And you guys can see there we have a big, sweet wing case going. 
and we'll just go ahead and cure. What the heck? Cancel. I hit the button on my mouse that says cancel the video. Oh, dude, no problem, Brando. Uh, sorry, the one person I told not to call me is the one person who called me. <laughs> That's like uh, totally the way it works. So the legs are going to be kind of your option, your flavor. I leave a little bit more leg, um, and and that's fine. So, um, but you know, if you wanted to, I don't mind. You can trim them down. Just do it by like a quarter inch at a time. Um, but all in all, you can tie this pattern in blacks, olives. Um, if you don't smash your tails up, they splay out really nice. Um, but overall, just a cool little buggy pattern. This is still the March Brown. You are right. All I did was use the same dubbing for the thorax, and then I pulled a wing case. And you can see there's a piece of flash in there, which I attribute to, like, Mike Mercer. I'm a leg man. Absolutely. 100%. Everybody knows this, Brando. Um, all about those legs. Uh, but... You know, it is what it is, and that is a great, great fly for right now. Heavy, condensed little bug. It's going to get down quickly. And we're going to drop it out. So, this is a big dog. That is a 5.5 mil bead. I'll tell you guys right off the bat. Uh, <laughs> uh, if I moved on. No, I didn't move on. I was uh, mitigating shenanigans, and I apologize for shenanigans. Um, apparently, there's shenanigans on the other side, too. So this is a point five, uh, point three five non-lead. It's a big piece of wire. So once I have it kind of dialed into where I want it, it's really tough to break with your nails. So I like to do a little helicopter maneuver, and then we push it down in. And this is going to get, this is kind of brutal. Um, good life hack is to hold it with one hand, and if you don't have a little pair of pliers, you can use the inside of your scissors kind of like a crimper. It's kind of handy so it doesn't look um, super stellar on video. <laughs> and before I forget, because I'm being forgetful here, secondary to the shenanigans, is we have to put our in our antenna. Cool thing is the wire is going to move up and down the shank right now. So we can mitigate that issue pretty quickly. Um, I'm going to use the same like kind of tanny calabatus ones. Um, you know, if you're trying to if you wanted them to be like a little bit darker, maybe we'll use these dark ones. These are dope too. Um, if you're tying a golden stone version of this with say yellow peacock, you can use yellow versions. Um, let's use brown. Let's see what that looks like. I'm not fully sure that the color of biot actually makes a mega difference. So I just oppose them. That's what I'm doing, guys, by the way, when I'm... Actually, I don't want it to go that far. Forgot we have that wire. So don't go too crazy with your wraps. Keep it under inside the bead. And then we'll go ahead and whip finish from there. Let's see. Uh-oh. Hey, guys. Yeah, I'm back. Sorry, no more phone calls, hopefully. It is the spring season, and I do rep for a living. So, sometimes people call, and they need stuff at 6 o'clock at night. It's a thing. It happens. So, I don't do much of a ramping setup here for, like, ramping up 
to have this smooth transition. I'll show you why. Um, you don't need to. More brown. These brown guys looked cool. Oops, dropped one. So when I say that I oppose them, so naturally they kind of sit, and these are the leading wings off of a like turkey. So they sit like that, and what I do is I flip them over so there's a shiny and a dull side. Somewhat, not a ton. And I just make both the the shiny options touch each other. And then you can go ahead and exchange them. And, oh well, bugger. So you can use uh, a hot spot if you want. I'm going to vary this one and not do a hot spot. It's just like the egg. Um, I just use some glow bright in red, oranges. I mix it up blues, greens, purples. I don't really care. Um, uh, and it's not that I'm being like weird about it, but I just I enjoy using different colors. So it's all good. Okay, so we're going to take this medium or small size tinsel. You can use large if you want to get bigger with it. Um, and then what I like to use is uh, the 5 to 7 inch variation, the large peacock hurl. It's, uh, it gives me more to work with. So th while I'm tying flies, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty solid. Um, and I'm going to take out about 6 to 8 strands. So I'm going to go ahead and walk up to where I want my thorax to be. We'll start work from here. So you can see it, I'm going to start by over overlapping. And right here I do a couple extra wraps if you guys caught that. Um, and that really brings in. And you can see I don't twist them, I lay them flat. So I'm continuously wrapping over the top of the net, the like the layer in front. So it's like a pretty simple operation. Once I get up into the here, I'll go ahead and tie off. What loon magnet? You didn't see any loon magnets. That thing. I feel like I have like fuzz in my ears from the last fly. So I'll just really carefully um, take some wraps forward. This one I'm doing a little bit narrower. You know, if you want to go to a medium or a large, you can. I'm doing a little narrower flash on this guy. Um, so it's cool. You can adjust and you know, sometimes I'll use like a medium oval tinsel versus the small. So you'd see how much more flash that you'll end up having. I'm still going to use this medium in my wing case. But, um, and actually that goes on next. Um, So we're going to put that down first and foremost, and I want a little little bit of a longer wing case, you know? And you can see this, I like this opal, it's a Mirage opal tinsel, and it's, it is the flashiest stuff, hands down. Like, it's like, uh, super flashy. It's the Rolexes of, the Rolex of, uh, Flashaboos. Making a statement when you put that on a fly. So... Great scenario is, you know, muddy waters, stuff like that. Um, provides a little bit more um, substance for that fish to see. If it's, you know, more um, clearer water, maybe less. Use less um, flash, more natu naturalness. That's a new word we're going to use here is naturalness. 
The Opal Mirage is your jam. Heck yeah, man. It's good stuff. It's flashy. I dig it. Um, so again, these Chacon's Little Crusher legs, these are like the small ones. Um, buy the smaller ones. They're better for nymphs. Um, I think they were designed for saltwater, for whatever those fish eat, but um, I kind of dig them. But I'm going to use this like red fox squirrel. It's, a, it's a kind of more of a tan, and, and again, I just kind of primp it all up. Swaxy. It has a lot of, uh, so when I get into trying to just dubbing noodle stuff with squirrel, in it, I do dig having a little bit of tackiness, especially with my poor choices in thread, meaning that I only tie with 50. So it's uh, pretty slick stuff. And Squirrel is one of the nemesis on it. It's like the arch nemesis. So we'll dub out like what we're going to use for our thorax here. And I'm just going to hold the legs back, and then we'll do some wraps behind. I go through them, and I kind of just go all around the legs. I don't really stress out. If I need a little bit more, I think I can get it on there. Still a little bit of swax on here. But, all in all, this will be one juicy little salmon stony fly creature here. Um, funny thing is, if you don't have stoneflies in your rivers for whatever reason, maybe it's not like, I think most of the places out here in the west do. Um, not an entomology professional by any means. Um, on habitat ranges of stoneflies. But fish don't care, man. It's a big bug and they take, they, they, they go through the world mouth first, so Chances are, you throw a big ugly bug, I mean, you're going to get chowed. What's that one? There's like the super famous one, the Bitch Creek. And, I mean, nothing looks like that thing in my opinion. And fish places eat it. So we'll go ahead and whip finish in here. I'm going to whip over the top of this guy. Let's suck it down in there. little flow and then I'll do some thin just a nice coat of thin here so that's our that's our starter wing case there flyly75 what's up brother we're running on fumes here man so I'm going to do a little bigger wing case. Look at this. This is the first time. Red light. Uh, it's the first time since we've launched the Infinity Light that I've seen the red light. Because I just changed my batteries. Um, I bought an aftermarket battery charger and bought a bunch of batteries. Still cures. Red light, still cure. Full pull. Which is dope. Um... Uh, do a little leg trimaroo. A little bit different pattern than the last one. Um, but overall, super clean, classic 20 incher stonefly pattern. Works out pretty well. So, let's see. Should we go bonus round since you guys have suffered and, and do something that we all love and call the stupid fly? I think so. Um, we'll give you an extra one because I hate to break it to you, but the next Loon Live, I won't be here. Um, I'm going to be fishing for redfish in Texas. Uh, dry flies. Hey, we just did one in the beginning. You missed the you missed the you missed the one dry fly that I will do of the year. I am sorry, Fly Life Seven Seven Five. That was it. Over and out. Uh, no, we'll have some more coming up here soon. Sorry. But we already did the dry fly tonight and only had things for one dry fly. Um, Ahrex 523. 
beast beast hook it's a jig and it's long so hands down favorite one of my favorite 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 springtime patterns if you don't cut your thread it's okay this is the bonus fly so I'm allowed to do dumb maneuvers and we'll work around it um, so what happens when you're looking at comments while you cut thread things happen mistakes get made Let's see if this can get snipped off of there cutting loose GSP is super fun too um, there we go so light olive super floss sexy floss life flex whatever you feel like doing flyboy koi 128 take care man thanks for hanging out brother appreciate it you worked through the difficulties and made it to what should have been the end. So I appreciate it. Um, so we're going to go ahead and pull antenna and we'll whip finish. This little uh, putting your antenna on first is a very important step. And we'll rotate and we'll go ahead and start our thread again back here because we're just going to put a few wraps on of non-lead wire. But since I was already in motion, we're going to stay in motion. Yeah, man, I'm uh, I'm pretty stoked. We're going out of Port Aransas. Aransas. If you're from Texas and I said that horribly wrong, that's okay. I apologize. So I just want a few wraps here. But yeah, it should be a super fun time. I don't know if that's like the big red fish season or just a good opportune time for the crew that I'm going with to go. But uh, I'm very thankful. And we'll, I will take it. Red fish seem like uh, angry saltwater bass for some reason. Like they're just their, their style they eat all sorts of different top water and subsurface and are just generally grumpy so they seem cool to me um, so we tie in a tail the same material and and this just happens to be some brilli untechnical brown chenille <laughs> um, so around here we call this the stupid fly because Fisher it, it's just big it's easy to tie um, just a super floss rubber legs but the fish seem to go stupid for it sometimes I'll give it a few extra wraps in there just to beef it up a bit build my tapers that the way I want them once I get here we'll go ahead and uh, pull in our legs so I just do one side then the other for the back leg because there's only going to be one kind of like it's my style I don't worry about it but I know they're secured and then for my front legs I go like I told you you should be able to crank this little bugger out really fast um, And I'm not leaving the legs this long. I just like a little bit of extra to work with here. Um, so you can see I'm kind of working over this quite a few little bits there. I like the green bead. I don't know why. You could put a hot pink one on there. Um, caught fish on a hot pink beaded version of this the other day. This is a, 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 a Firehole Outdoors 523. It's a 3x long jig hook beast beast hook for tying cool stuff like like this. And then uh, I like to inject the head cone of this with some resin. We hope the light has enough power left over to fit, hit this out one last time. Which it did. So that's awesome. 
So you can see you got little antennas, and then you got all your leg segments here. And I don't care where they're going because in the water they're just going to go boing, 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 bounce around and stuff. Simon es un gigante rubber legs. Um, so, yeah, perfect. Giant Pat's rubber legs on a jig hook, so it makes it better. Um, so yeah, that's that's about everything that I got for you guys this week, um, and a little something extra. Giant Pat's rubber legs, super heavy, 5.5 mil tungsten bead. Um, if you have like a four weight and you're like high sticking it, it's a it's a pretty solid point fly. So. Um, anyways, hey, we'll catch you guys next time. Um, maybe I'll do some a few pop-ups between now and then, and we'll have some fun. But thanks for tuning in, guys, and I appreciate it. We'll check you next time.